Hi hey everybody, welcome back to Chicago, the Big Idea Conference. Um, I'm joined here by Nassim Malik of MRA Global Sourcing. So Nassim, thank you for joining me. I poked you out of the audience for a couple of questions, so grateful sure. that uh, you do this for a sec. My pleasure, thank you. So I had a couple of questions related to talent, actually. The first presentation of the last session we had was related to technology, cognitive procurement, how that's really changing what it means to be a procurement professional. I just love your opinion on what that actually means for the procurement skill set of the future. Right now, definitely a very thought-provoking session in terms of how we're beginning to see this change uh, more and more, um, whether it's something as simple as new jobs being created in procurement that are very data and analytics specific. So we're beginning to see that whether, and we talked about this before, whether it's a data scientist, data engineer, or a analytics analytics director, mm -hmm. these roles weren't here a few years right. ago. So what that's now um, creating a need for that kind of specialty, the analytical skill, we're having, having more and more clients saying we need people that can not only uh, slice and dice and manipulate and find us uh, relevant information within the data, but then we need people that can translate that data yeah. into making insightful um, uh, presentations. They can c uh, use that to collaborate with stakeholders and gain buy-in. Yeah, you, s you said, like, tell stories. Tell stories with data, and that's such a unique skill set right now. Exactly, absolutely. So to put it all together. Um, one of the things that, um, in the Tom Derry presentation, he was talking a little bit about, you know, when you find good people, don't, don't get in their way. You know, peop good people are going to want to move on, and you shouldn't really stop them from doing that. But I'm sure that you, from your role as a recruiter and a headhunter, you know, you, you have that battle all the time of you find good people, but the organizations they're with want to keep hold of them. I wonder, does that ever work, kind of end in success, or, or sh do you sh should you really just get out of the way and stay out of the way if somebody's made that decision to actually go and leave? It's difficult to actually get them to stay once they have made that decision, because you would think that they have done their due diligence, they know the reasons why they're leaving. It's not just greener pastures, but it's, uh, there's, a st it's there's a coherent reason yeah. for why they want to leave. So in that case, uh, more often than not, if you can't even convince them, it's typically a short-term place. Seventy percent of people that accept a counter offer and stick around mm -hmm. are there less than a year. Right. So the data doesn't back that up, so it's probably prudent to let them let them go. Yeah, they've already kind of made the decision that they want to go. Uh, the last question that I had in seen was, um, in one of the sessions we talked about risk and risk tolerance, risk mitigation. You know, when you think about careers, we're often risk averse. We take the easy kind of path or we maybe don't want to put ourselves out there and take make a decision that's uncomfortable, which is often going and joining a new company. Is there a good way that you can think about mitigating the risk of a bad decision in terms of, or a decision that doesn't work out in terms of when you go and join a new organization? Or how do you counsel people to kind of think about that when they're on the fence as to whether to make a decision to move or to stay? So the, a lot of factors should be, uh, should come into play uh, when they're looking to make a very important career decision, right? Whether it's culture, it's, uh, it's advancement, it's location. What are the reasons that drove them to want to be able to advance their career at this point? So once they've, you know, once again, done their due diligence, know that this makes sense, then to take that leap of faith um, after that is, uh, is not unwise. Mm -hmm. uh, because if nothing else, as we've been talking about all day today, the pace of change and innovation and disruption in the marketplace will necessitate you to not be complacent will necessitate you that you have to take some risks, uh, whether it's on the job yeah. or when it comes to your career, sometimes to go find that opportunity and see if that's uh, something that can help you move forward. So, Well, well Nassim, I want to really thank you for joining us for this uh, quick session. We'll be back later in the day here from Chicago at the Big Ideas Conference. If uh, you have any perspectives, opinions, we'd love to hear from you. You can go on Twitter and the uh, you can use hashtag Big Ideas 2017. Thank you.